Donald Trump at his rally last night tried to make his final appeal to, he'll say suburban women. He means white women who don't like him as much as they did in 2016. Here is his desperate begging to get them back on his side. Aliens, raise your taxes, confiscate your guns, get rid of your second amendment. I mean, here's one that's, that's incredible, destroy your suburbs. Okay, so they talk about the suburban women. And somebody said, I don't know if the suburban woman likes you. I say, why? But we had this. <laughs> I love you too. They said, they may not like the way you talk, but I'm about law and order. I'm about having you safe. I'm about having your suburban communities. I, I don't want to build low income housing next to your house, okay? If that's okay. And I ended the regulation, the rule that made the zoning so impossible that you had to destroy your communities. And then I hear the, the suburban woman. I think that the suburban woman, and I used to say suburban housewife, I used to take heat, but I said, does anybody care? Do you care if I say suburban? No, they're all going, no. Again, the only one cares is them. Trump said suburban housewife, but I didn't say it because I don't. You learn very quickly, you learn very quickly. But suburban women, they should like me more than anybody here tonight because I ended the regulation that destroyed your neighborhood. I ended the regulation that brought crime to the suburbs and you're gonna live the American dream and that's what you're gonna do. Okay, so it's about to get even more racist and patronizing um, and pathetic in the second bit. I. I I like I like our audience. I can't make him watch two minutes and nineteen seconds all at once. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about this part first. Um, Jr. He keeps saying the word suburban, but I feel like that's not what he means. I kind of feel like he means something else there. Anytime he talks about low income and bringing people in, all those are the same trigger words and phrases for what we've always seen. So um, these suburban women and also the suburban housewife, we know it's the, the suburbs are supposed to be this escape from those urban areas. What's the opposite of the suburban? Mm, the urban. So what is another term people used to, before they started calling them blacks for Trump? Was those urban people. What are those urban people? They're minorities and they're scary. You know those high crime areas? What's the first city they always bring up? Ah, Chicago, that's right, it's those urban areas of crime, infested areas, because all they do is, is run around and terrorize their own neighborhoods and destroy things. We've, we've heard it all, it's all built up, it's a part of the same narrative. There's no dog whistles, this is a straight normal whistle. And you know, he's been called out on it, it doesn't matter, because he wanted that, you know? So there's, there's no calling someone out on something that they're exposing themselves for. So it's, um, it, it, it is what it is at this point. And at, at this point, the way that he's losing women uh, support, uh, support from women, I don't know if it's suburban women or urban women or somewhere in the middle, he's losing them all. And I think, yeah. I'm not sure who he's to tell him, hey, we got to bail on this part of the stump speech because it's kind of senseless. Nobody cares. He's, I mean, like, Remember, we, we have to hold two possible ex explanations in our mind as we watch all of the rest of Trump's campaigning. Uh, He's amazing at politics, or he got kind of a little bit lucky in 2016 and narrowly squeaked by a win in the Electoral College, and it turns out they ain't actually that amazing. Is this a good appeal? We're gonna have more in this segment, not just about women, but about senior citizens as well. Is he a political genius, as many continue to think, or did he just no. get kind of lucky? No. All that he just said he there is lucky. insane. Yeah, I, look. The, he obviously means white women. Um, that that's clearly what he means. The, the whole thing about ending the the regulation and stopping the low income people. First of all, how many people in that crowd before Trump started talking about it thought about that even once in their entire life? Maybe they didn't want low income people or whatever he actually means by that, which is pretty clear. But they weren't thinking about that regulation. They just like that they get what he means, that it's made for them and it's very clear. Also, bear in mind when he keeps talking about how low people without money are gonna ruin your American dream. Remember that he's a right wing populist. He cares about people who've been left behind and yeah. economically hurt and have economic anxiety. That's why he's demonizing people without money constantly as his final campaign tech. Just bear that in mind when hearing about right wing populism. Doesn't tend to go all that deep. As soon as it intersects with race, suddenly they're going in a different direction, oddly enough. But anyway, we're gonna have the numbers on the women because JR, you asked about it. Before we get to that though, let's watch the second part of this where it gets truly grovelly. And remember this, 
29% of the people experiencing the American dream in the suburbs happen to be minority. And you don't know that, but 29%. And we're doing this for everybody. We're not doing it one way or the other. We're doing it. And I ended it. They said, sir, we can amend it. I said, no, I don't want to amend it. I want to end it. It was a horror show. And this loser, Cory Booker, is the guy that's going to be in charge of the program. The guy's a stone-cold loser. One percent. He got one percent. He ran. He was going to be great. You know, one percent. Every week. He was like her. Down, down, down. They should have picked him. But no, he'll be in charge of your uh, suburban. So can I ask you to do me a favor? Suburban women, will you please like me? Remember? Please. Please. I saved your damn neighborhood, okay? Okay. Yeah, that video brought to you by the Grovel Institute. <laughs> uh, will you please like me? It's the it's the Jeb Bush. Please like. <laughs> That's all it is. Please clap. Uh, Jr. Did you notice? Um. So really, really fast. So he brought up Cory Booker. A why? I nobody could figure out why he brought up Cory no. Booker. Um, but that's that's racist, obviously. But it went a step further because that video that we just showed you was literally to the second the continuation of the last one we showed you. It's two and a half minutes. When he said uh, he was like her, why did he immediately transition to just a her? He didn't even say who the her is. He's minutes into a rant. It's not about Kamala Harris, but that's who he was talking about there. Why? You know exactly why that's the transition <laughs> he made. Oh my yeah. God. Like he's, he's like, okay, a couple of presidential candidates that I can come up with that were black folks because that's where my brain is. And then he also, you know, he, he also interrupted himself to point out that he's not being racist by talking mm -hmm. about the 29% of black folks that live uh, the American dream in the suburbs. So is, is this a guilty conscience? Are you making sure that you're going to go ahead and, and address what everyone knows is happening? And also, he mentioned that American dream of living in the suburbs. Um, I mean, I don't live in the suburbs and I can probably pull a significant number of people that don't that would think that's the American nightmare to live in the suburbs. Nobody, everybody isn't flocking to the suburbs. This isn't 1957. Again, he still lives there. And that's where he sees this whole suburban housewife thing. It's why he had mm -hmm. to address the suburban housewife because it's 1957. Everybody's June Cleaver and everybody's wearing pearls and high heels while they cook chili. That's what he sees America <laughs> as. And anyone else that isn't that are un American or they're these weird either minorities or immigrants that are coming in to destroy your America because that's what's that's that's the racist screed. It's we're living mm -hmm. this nice pristine life and we just ran away from those urban sinners. And now we're living this nice pristine life and they're out here trying to take over that too. How dare they? They're coming for my daughter. I'm, I'm waiting for the stump speech where he mentions your suburban housewives, you're looking to protect your daughters, right? It's coming. Yeah, I. Oh, would he do it? Would he do it? His fans oh, well, would love it. Tucker Carlson already did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, With, uh, yeah, they're, they're going to drag was, you out. It was, yeah, yeah, he's like the, the pimps or like OnlyFans is the pimps, and your your lily white daughter is uh, is the prostitute. Jesus. Who, who, how do people, uh, what do people picture pimps as? What, what, uh, what gender and what race? When you dress I up for mean, Halloween, you're like, I'm gonna be a pimp, and you put on that stupid hat <laughs> and a purple suit. Who are you emulating? Well, I would say the first two things in order that I picture. One is Cosmo Kramer from Seinfeld, dressed as a pimp, because <laughs> that was a great episode. Two is the guy from Project Veritas. <laughs> He's a very serious investigative reporter, don't forget that. Um, anyway, okay, so Trump is making his appeal to suburban women. Won't you please like me? Um, no, they won't, they hate your guts and they should. So let's talk about uh, recent polls. An average of the last five live interview polls puts Biden up by 25 points among women voters. That includes a 34 point margin in CNN's poll released last week, a 34 point poll. Trump is getting trounced by women. He's as unliked as me in high school. Anyway, uh, no <laughs> candidate of either party. This is amazing for some history. No candidate of either party in the polling era has ever led among women voters by more than 24 points in the final pre-election polls. Jesus. This includes the blowout elections of 1964 and 72, which Lyndon Johnson and Richard Nixon took by more than 20 points respectively. So even in these blowout elections, 
where they won by more than double digits, they still couldn't rack up a lead among women that Biden, who isn't leading by 20 points, is getting amongst them. Trump is hated by a lot of people, but women love to hate Trump. That much is clear at this point. <laughs> Please love me. I, I I still don't know why. Maybe I'm waiting for one of these ads to come out. Um, maybe we should make one. Um, the comparison mm -hmm. between Jeb and the please clap and the please love me. This isn't the first time either. Trump is always begging people to like him. Can you guys like me now? That's the basis mm -hmm. for his entire existence is can you like me? Because I'm a horrible person and I need your validation in order to continue on with this charade, charade of, a, of a campaign. <sighs> I'm tired, yeah. John. I know, I know. Uh, last bit of context, Clinton won uh, women by 13 points among likely voters and 14 points among registered voters in the final pre-election polls. So uh, Biden is doing almost twice as well in the gap uh, um, among women rather than um, Hillary Clinton. And that, that to me is a demonstration of that uh, people know Trump better than they did in 2016. And Biden doesn't have some of the baggage uh, that Hillary Clinton did. Some of it earned, some of it not, uh, that dragged her down uh, in that way. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.